Hello everyone, I'm Lily, and today's conference is events. I'm going to, what I want to show to you guys is my understanding and my growth, the growth through practicing and understanding the competency system. I've got two MCs I'm going to mainly discuss today. The first one is value aligned decision making, which helps me to determine my app B combination. So all the things starts with the three standards. And I was looking at my PA list with um, the three standards. And I started to have some questions when I am being in, when I am thinking and choosing. Do I want to show um, the college that I am a performer? Um, not really. I actually want to show them more. I have the ability to be a scholar in the future. Do I only want to study, uh, do I only want to show them my ability in the music field? I have actually have something bigger that I want to show is the field of culture. And also I realize when I um, finally step out and look at my FE list and I realize I'm doing a lot of promotion work um, about the um, culture. So the real value that I come up with and that helps me to determine my FE group is um, this it shows my potential to be a culture scholar and promoter in the future. So here comes my final FB group. They're all um, regarding, they're all related to one kind of culture and also they all require me to study in order to be able to promote it in the future. Um, for example, in the, my capstone project, I am studying a culture, the opera. It's a very old traditional form of culture that people really see its value. And what I want to do with this project is to do research, find its value, and be able to uh, share this culture with more people. And also for my individual PA, I did a promotion video shooting, and I treat um, our competency, I, I use my stories to indicate how competency has helped me grow in Yungu. And I think competency is something I see as a part of Google's culture. It's something that's so new that people need to know. So I'm um, sort of sort of doing research and promoting this culture. And the others are similar, but regarding different culture. So in order to be a culture scholar and promoter in the future, there is one competency that I think is very crucial for me. It's which is active listening. So um, my understanding of active listening is, I, I see it as a effective ch channel for obtaining information from people. And through practicing active listening, the other party, the people I'm talking to, can be well taken care of by me, and then they will thus smoothly convey their thoughts. And at last, um, this is helping me, like by practicing active listening in the conversation, it helps me to get more information that I need. And um, the, the people that I'm talking to may even discover something new that he or she didn't realize in the beginning from our conversation. So um, to put it into a nutshell, it's five um, keywords. And it goes like a sequence. Um, firstly, I need to have some kind of goal for getting into that conversation, and then I need to notice some of the cues that um, that will help me to take care of the um, uh, the people that are talking to me, and also to notice like what he or she wants to say, and also um, doing analysis and that last to respond and um, achieve my goals. Because of the time, I'm only going to share how I um, practice response. So um, I think there are two key points according to my understanding of the competency. There are two key points I need to achieve in the response part. The first one is to um, to take care of the goal that I set before um, before the conversation, and also to make sure that the other the person that I'm talking to is not feeling embarrassed and it's feeling free to say um, like all the things that she or she wants. So I've got two PAs, one from Chinese class, one from my English class to demonstrate this, uh, uh, how I do in the response part. So um, I'm mainly going to use my Chinese PA for showing um, how, I, how I take care of others in my response process. Um, so every, every time I see, the, I, I'm going to describe three things, themes from, um, from my interview with uh, with 
um, with, with my interviewee to show like how I sort of how my responses are based on others' reactions. When I see um, the interviewee pulling her chairs a little bit closer to me, I um, get the sense that she is trying to say something more about the point that she's talking about. So what I would do is I lean a little bit forward to her, I look at her, I smell at her, and I show sort of thumbs up and these sort of postures to encourage her to talk more about it. And sometimes I actually want her to talk more about the words or something that she actually explained before. So um, I'll use wordly methods like repeating, you said that, um, or doing a summary, do you mean blah, 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 to encourage her to talk more through the content. And also um, for a better response and not like embarrass others, I would prepare two series of questions regarding one information that I want to get, um, just in case that maybe one question is not going to inspire that interviewee, then there's subject substitute that I can go with. And also in our um, reading seminar, I'm going to show how my responses are based on the goals. Um, the goal um, I get from Ms. Wright and also our, um, our ratings, is, uh, our rating that paper is let everyone engage fluently in the conversation and share the idea. So our center goals like Q&A, so students would raise questions to a class and let the class sort of discuss and we need to make sure that everyone gets a chance to talk about their ideas. And um, there are two things that commonly happen. I would see that Every time I raise a question, um, I would see people being like this. They're looking. They're they have their heads down and they're turning pages, um, and that's there's a silence. And um, what I would do in this situation as a response is I would re repeat the page number and repeat my question and also um, share my thoughts about like what I think about my question. And also sometimes I see people looking up like that when they're sharing their ideas. And I was assume that they they're thinking about vocabulary words or they they you know they, they don't know how to express their thoughts. So I'll use some of the word methods I mentioned above about like do you mean this or looking for this vocabulary words to um, promote our conversation and moves it further. So um, I think active listening can be applied to many um, situations. As long as it has something to do with conversation, it can be interview, discussion, or like in the teamwork. Um, and for example, in my uh, capstone about your opera, I think I'm going to use this um, active listening skill when I'm talking with the your opera expert for um, getting to know about your opera and maybe extracting information that that the expert didn't really realize about the value for teenagers to get in contact with your opera. So um, finally, I, I want to say um, my understanding toward the Compton system overall. I see it as fish and water, so we're the fish, and the competency system is like water. I believe that whenever we're doing activities or things, we are practicing some of the competencies, but because we're in the water, we don't really know. And um, because of the competency system, we really get to you know, jump ahead of the sea and see like, oh, there are, um, the, there are a lot of abilities that was developing in this competency. So um, I think the meaning of the system is it actually helps us to figure out and allows us to seek for the water, the competency that we want to develop. So um, what is the future, what, what will I develop my competency in the future? Um, from, from the, as what I said about the active listening, I actually have some limitations or some of my weaknesses that I think bothers me to, to like achieve my goal or like to um, actively, um, inclusively listen to others is I would sort of make assumptions about what this guy is going to say. What do I want to get from this guy? Um, but I think that is kind of um, not very good for um, for like having an open mind or get information. So I am going. Th this is something that I want to improve in, in in the future, and I want to do that through practicing the other two 
competencies, which I think would help me somehow to uh, to to improve my active listening skill. They are um, intercultural issue examination and cultural awareness and inclusion. So since I want to be a culture scholar in the future, um, I, I, it's, it's, it, it's inevitable that I will experience some culture diversity. And I'm going abroad to America for sharing culture and also like getting in information. So I think, um, firstly, I'll start with um, in our Chinese class, to do, um, to do the project in Chinese class and develop my intercultural issue examination to get to know more about the world first. And then the next step is going to uh, be a cultural awareness and inclusion. Try to gain, try to learn how to uh, have an inclusive mind about different people's different reactions and to even pre like to accept that there is going to be something, their answers that's out of my assumption. So, um, yeah, and also I want to develop greater resilience because I think that's what it takes to be a scholar. You have to be able to dive deep into something. So that's, oh, and also I want to dive deep into active listening more. So I think that is what I need to, um, you know, to get more feelings, get more understandings about these competency. And that's all, thank you. Thank you, Lily, and uh, I enjoy your presentation very much. Uh, literally, the, the part you mentioned, the, uh, the your understanding about the competency in general. And uh, um, I guess my first question is that uh, we can start from the, uh, the last part, the, the, the future plan, right? You mentioned that uh, grit and resilience is important to be a future scholar. Uh, my question is that beyond that, is there any other part that a future scholar needs to develop? Is there any other competencies? Well, um, actually, I think all of the competencies are, if, if I got time, I would like to develop all of the competencies because they are, um, I mean, when I, when I practice active listening, I would know what, what behaviors should I have, what kind of sequence should I do in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And similarly, when I am um, aiming to be a culture scholar in the future, there are a lot of competencies I can go with, like effective writing. I, I need to write in order to um, convey my thoughts. Mm -hmm. But these two, um, I, I would say these are these three are yeah. But I think as the most important ones because um, I am lack of the inclusiveness of um, diversity of culture and. I actually I'm lack of information to knowledge to like what it is in somewhere abroad, not around me. So um, I think it's important for me to practice these two first mm -hmm. to gain an open mind about the, all of the things that's going to come uh, to me as like I'm a culture scholar mm -hmm. and also. Um, Actually, I choose this grit and resilience. That's because I've really had experiences of being a researcher to dive deep into something. Um, I think all of the PBLs and stuff like that I've done in the past are sort of like shallow. So I really, um, it's it's not it's not like thing as grit and resilience. It should be like <laughs> dive deep and then deeper. What's deeper? And um, so yeah, so. I think that's why I chose to develop E3 instead of the others. But, but yeah, I, I would keep understanding all of the others um, in order to support my um, goal of being a culture a scholar. Thank you. And uh, uh, I admire that you uh, your statement that uh, you do have some weakness uh, around the actual listening, and uh, you also have a, a a goal to achieve, right? And my question is that uh, what's your kind of strategy or things you want to try to cope with your weakness? Well, um, actually, I think. Actually, this process is not after I, I did all of my PAs and then I realized my weaknesses. Actually, when I am doing my PA, um, I actually did an interview first and then I went again to that, to that, to that guy with um, some of my assumptions. I think I am going to extract he, she feels a sense of belonging in Hangzhou and that is the characteristic. So I actually go with one um, assumptions. 
Yes. And um, in the process of talking with her, I, I sort of realized that this is not enough. I realized my weaknesses in the middle of me doing that PA, and some of the strategies that I use in, in this part as a response is actually what I learned in process, and I wish to continue doing um, in my fur uh, like further conversation. For example, repeating, repeating the words. If I sort of repeat and ask for her to say more, talk about more, then it's not me sort of limiting her or like um, giving assumptions uh, ahead of her, but actually listening and gaining information from her about like what she wants to say. So that um, that's you know I'm, I'm intaking her ideas and then um, forbid the situation that I am actually limiting her. Thank you. And my last question is that uh, it seems like you mentioned a lot of growth, you know, along the way. My question is that what's the big takeaway from preparing the defense? Okay. Um, I actually have a lot of takeaways, um, as you, as you just said. Um, I think there are two. I, I actually want to share two in the process of develop of, of preparing for it. The first one has something to do with my last PA, uh, my last competency defense. I actually think I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good in sort of meeting up, like going with a clear standard or a, a clear rubric. If you have something that's like, you have to say at least two, blah, 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 I would, you know, I would have to. But um, I think for the competency defense, everyone can have different, there's no one right answer for like how to meet the standards. Everyone can sort of have their own ways to meet the standards. And also the key point actually in the competency system or actually in um, preparing for these sort of defense is to really get to understand what you're trying to say so that um, you're not, I mean, you're showing yourself, you're showing all of your understanding to um, to some people, and you're not like just uh, meeting requirements. That's uh, the one thing I learned and I accept. And also, um, I think um, I was growing a lot in organizing all of my materials I wanted to say. Um, I, I, I learned that for every defense, you need to have one argument that's like going throughout the process. I used to have um, like limited argument. I, I feel like it's hard for me to fit everything into that argumentation. So um, after all, I sort of take a step back to, I, I used to think that my argument is I want to be a culture learner in the future, but I think it's hard for me to fit like all of the things in it, because if I, I want to prove that I want to be a culture uh, learner in the future, I should be saying that um, this is what I did. I am a culture uh, researcher. This is what I did. I'm a culture researcher. But I think I'm actually sharing more about my understanding toward the competency system. So I sort of took, took a step back and look at like all of the things and I determined to say, okay, my, my argument is I have understand the competency system, and I've grown a, a lot through practicing them. Okay, no more questions for me. <laughs> um, I'm very impressed by your um, statement, saying that the way you portray yourself as a cultural promoter. Um, but I'm also surprised that you chose uh, to illustrate or oh, explain active listening. Because active listening is more kind of intaking information. But how about you're promoting culture? You're promoting something your audience probably don't know before. So do you think is there any other competencies or abilities that you need to acquire to help you promote cultures to people who most likely will go to the US, for example, won't share a similar cultural background as you? and maybe there's some like understanding barriers or experiences that they don't have. So um, can I think about some other, say, competencies or abilities that you need to master or develop in order to enable you to become a better cultural promoter? Okay, so I have in mind of like two competencies. 
I have actually gained these two, but I think I will go further to develop them in the future. They are um, public speaking and like mentioned effective writing. Because um, I think there are two most effective ways to express and promote an idea. The first one is through writing. And um, for effective writing, um, I need to be able to write in two languages, and I um, need to sort of have strategies for sharing the um, ideas to different people, and I have to consider who are my audience. So that is something that I think I can develop as like one of the competencies. And the other is public speaking, because um, you cannot avoid that even if you have a piece of writing in front of some of the audience, they would maybe like come to you and say like, I don't agree with this, or can you briefly talk more about this? So I think um, it's inevitable that I need to be able to stand out and looking, looking confident and be able to express my ideas clearly through, um, you know, through your strategies and practicing public speaking. I, is that, could you go back to the first page when you say uh, why choosing your featured evidence, you are based on you want to be a, the big circle, the big blue circle, can yeah. you uh, uh, yes, yes, um, is you said you want to be a culture scholar and a promoter, and my question is somehow similar to Agnes' question, um, the, your competency plan that you mentioned in, in the last PowerPoint slide is more about getting to know the culture, uh, but you didn't mention what you will do after you know this culture. Okay, so um, firstly, I want to briefly explain why is that happening. Because um, I think compared to culture awareness and all of the competency that I hope to develop and I show here, um, I am doing a bit better in the promotion process, um, like because I already um, practice public speaking and effective writing things like that. So I didn't really get more. So so I actually want to show more of the of the um, of of I think more of my weaknesses because actually from the process of determining my my FB, I realized that um, I actually. The, the, all of the cultures here that I want to, that, that, I, that I chose as my FB, they are re related to a culture that's endangered, whether they're too old or whether they're too new. And I think I would encounter difficulties for, you know, if I want to really promote these cultures, because um, people nowadays in the society, like, for example, we opera, they think we opera is something that's out of date and, and they, they you know, I, I think really people, even experts, would see its value, but I firmly believe that there are something that I want to share. But because they're somehow too old or too new, I need, I think the taking in part is the most important part that, um, and most important and also the most difficult part for me to become a culture promoter and, you know, scholar in the future. So that's, that's why I was sharing all of it. I'm sorry that I missed the first part of your presentation, but I fully understand, or rather, I, I think I do understand why you chose active listening, even though you are you, you, you saying that you want to become a culture promoter. And I think because active listening will probably help you um, know your audience before you actually start promoting, and you should really know who you are promoting to, what kind of people, what kind of uh, mindset you already have before you start promoting them. So, Perfectly fine, and I think I did um, see some of your, you know, the, the going through of your capstone project a little bit, like the things that you helped for some of your uh, friends. All right, I'm just a little bit because maybe because I missed the first part. Uh, can you explain a little bit why you chose the mess the dining game? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, firstly, it's it acts as a complement of like of it, it. It's sort of I I am a student who mainly do things in the literary, art, music, and it, it acts as a com uh, like compliment. And also, I've actually done some research on that. Um, 
because I want to be a culture scholar and promoter in the future, so which means it has something to do with communication, sharing, and I searched for, um, like in the college, there is a prerequisite, there is a requirement for um, bachelors of communication to graduate. Um, one of them is to take statistic classes. So that is why I chose to um, have this designing the game, which I use the knowledge of statistic and probability um, in order to uh, show my ability of like potential of being a commuter a motor in the future. Okay. If there's no more questions, thank you. Ah. <laughs>